What Maori are trying to preserve are their customary rights. Their customary proprietary rights. Private proprietary rights. And what the government is saying it's about to legislate away are private proprietary rights. Before even giving the claimant opportunity to demonstrate that they possess those rights. The claimants were iwi, iwi from the northern parts of the South Island. And they applied to the Maori <coughs> land court, and they wanted an order that was declaring the land under the Marlborough Sounds as being a Maori customary land. Now, they're claiming customary rights over everything beyond the beach. So the foreshore and the sea bed. Now the Crown opposed this. And what they did is bring the matter before the High Court. So the position that the Crown took is that Maori customary rights to the foreshore and seabed had been extinguished. And the High Court agreed. And the High Court <coughs> followed Simon's ruling and followed the 90 Mile Beach ruling. And it concluded that customary title over adjacent dry land had been extinguished. There were earlier statutes that had extinguished the land of Maori to the beach. And so what the court said is by extension, these rights had also been extinguished. We appealed it, it went before the Court of Appeals. Court of Appeals unanimously reversed the High Court. Now what the Court of Appeals said, what you have is customary rights that are protected in common law until they are explicitly extinguished by Parliament. Now the next point was the statutory argument. The government points to a variety of statutes. These are general statutes that vest proprietary rights to all land that is not privately owned. So we're saying any land that is not privately owned is crown land. The question becomes, is this sufficient to eliminate customary title, to extinguish customary title? So what the court said is that Maori possess customary rights over the foreshore and seabed, and these have not been extinguished either via alienation or by statute. These have not been extinguished. That's all the court has said. The Court of Appeals has not granted an order recognizing the rights of iwi to the foreshore and seabed. All they've said so far is that they have not been extinguished. So the matter is still live. So now we have to see the reaction. Law and society. So what was the social reaction to this? Well, the first thing you had was public outcry from a number of recreational groups, like surfers. So the recreational groups were saying, hey, I want access. But they didn't need to make that statement. No decision has been made. So in response to this, you have the Attorney General who came out and said, legislation will be passed to prevent Maori from gaining exclusive ownership over the foreshore and seabed. So Maori, of course, didn't like this new development. Why not? Well, years they've been before their courts to have recognition of their customary rights. And as this is about to happen, as the courts say, yes, you can go before the Maori land court and petition for recognition and then make your claim, Parliament comes in and says, nope, sorry, we're going to pass legislation that is going to prevent you from doing so. And what the government does is change their tune, the Crown changed their tune, and said we're going to go through a period, a six week period of consultation, where we're going to consult with various iwi to see how we can go about resolving this impasse. So, there were many hueys that were held, and all of them rejected the Crown's proposals. I believe there were 13 or 14 hueys held. There was a select committee that was established, and there were 4,000 submissions, 94% of which opposed the bill. So the result of this mass of opposition, the passing of the bill. <laughs> so 
Now, the Waitangi Tribunal looked at the foreshore and seabed as well and raised some very genuine rule of law concerns. They're concerned that, one, you are nullifying Maori, Maori's access to the courts. So it doesn't matter that you have a decision from the Court of Appeals. It doesn't matter that you're, all you're asking for now is opportunity to go before the Maori Land Court to present your case. Parliament is saying, we don't need to waste our time with the judiciary. We're making a decision. So the Waitangi Tribunal says, from a rule of law perspective, that is troublesome. What they also said was troublesome is that you are, in effect, seizing proprietary rights, nullifying proprietary rights, seizing property without compensation. Because the law did not provide for any form of redress. So what the Labour government did was it passed the bill as planned. What the Foreshore and Seabed Act say? The full legal and beneficial ownership of the public foreshore and seabed is vested in the Crown, so that the public foreshore and seabed is held by the Crown as its absolute property. So what this act does is nullify Maori customary rights to the foreshore and seabed. And contrary to the tribunal's recommendation, the act does not include a provision for compensation. So, the act was obviously not well received by Maori. There was a large protest march on Parliament. Um, we have Tariana Turia, who not only voted against the bill, but in fact left the, the Labour Party. And this is one of the reasons that you actually had the mobilization behind, or the popular mobilization needed to establish the Maori Party. New Zealand was brought before the UN Committee on Racial Discrimination. They were brought before the committee. Maori claimed that the act violated the International Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination, because this was specifically targeting Maori. And the committee agreed. The legislation appears to the committee to contain discriminatory aspects against Maori, in particular its extinguishment of the possibility of establishing Maori customary title over the foreshore and seabed and its failure to provide a guaranteed right of redress. Now, a couple questions you should think about. If you can pull a victory out from the claimant's feet, out from under the claimant's feet with legislation, has the situation really improved so very much since we brought it? And two, can Parliament simply do whatever it pleases? <coughs> 